We are going to start this week off by building the platform for the studio cabinets. You are joining this project about halfway through. I've already built the cabinet boxes and they are downstairs. And this platform is to create the toe kick as well as compensate for any slope in the basement. The cabinets are 120 inches long, so I'm going to create two 60 inch sections and I'm going to have a four inch rise in the center. And then we're going to take this down to the basement and figure out the rest. As you can see, this platform is pretty simple, just a series of two by twos that are screwed together. Um, there is absolutely no strength really needed in this. This is just to give me a flat surface that all the cabinets can sit on. And then the real strength will be from the blocking that goes underneath it, which will just be more pieces of the two by two cut to the proper length to get me the rise that I need. So need to finish screwing this one together screw the second one together, and then we can go downstairs and start putting it where it needs to be. The platform is now in the basement. I've gone ahead and screwed the two halves together, put the straight edge across them, clamped them on the ends, and now starts the tedious process of measuring and running up and down steps, cutting the blocking to get this thing level. Overnight, I came up with this simple tool it's just a piece of plywood that's cut at an angle using a clamp and I can set the height. That way I can go around every single location and set everything level and make sure I have everything the way I want it. And then I can go around and grab each one of these, take it up to the table saw, measure it, set up the table saw stop so that I can get the right width and then cut one, bring it down and then go around all of the uh, different pieces, cut them and screw them, and be done with this platform. done with the platform. Everything is level side to side and front to back. I also went ahead and added blocking to the middle of each section along with anchoring it to the wall in three spaces with a half inch space between it and the wall. So the next step is to get the cabinet boxes onto the platform and then start attaching them together and keep on moving along with this project.
interrupt that project for a different project. I am in my garage. It is 70 degrees outside and I want to take advantage of that beautiful weather. So I am going to clean my garage. But along with that, I am tired of dealing with my wood cart. It doesn't do what I want. It's just a huge pain in my side and I want to get rid of it. So with the help of this piece of plywood, these five pieces of angle iron, and with my pop-up tent lift, we are gonna solve this problem once and for all. show you what I have so far. The frame is finished. It is five feet wide and six feet long. In the center, I use one of the pieces of angle iron to create a ridge on the inside. And then I had some flat strap I welded to the other side to support this bay. I've also added two cross pieces at four feet from opposite sides because when I cut the piece of plywood to fit in here, I'm gonna have two four foot sections and then two two foot sections that are two and a half feet wide. So those cross supports are to be able to support that seam in the plywood. The last thing I need to do is to weld on these loops that will hold the cable from the hoist. Once I have these welded on, I need to wire wheel the entire thing and then paint it. And while the paint is drying, I'm gonna cut the plywood to the correct size and then I'll be back with you all in the morning. It is the next day and we now need to prepare the lift for the new tray. And the first step is getting rid of the old cables. I didn't like the steel cable that I was using because if you accidentally let it slip, it would shoot up to the ceiling and unspool on the bar. And it was just a headache to deal with because you had to drop the entire thing, put weights, make sure you had weights on it, and then spool it back up and made sure the line was doing what you wanted up here. So I decided to find an alternative, which is eight millimeter cord accessory rope. They make Prusik loops out of this. They make harnesses out of this. The rack itself can handle much more than it seems. The structure in the ceiling is plenty strong. In each corner, I have two 5 16th inch bolts that go up and over the joist and are bolted through a 3 16th inch plate. So these aren't just lag bolted into the joist these actually go up over 
and sandwich the joists. So the entire building would come down before the separated from the joist. I need to get back there now to be able to get a good idea of where to cut this cable and then set up this side and then we can move the tray underneath it and then start looping it all together. I spared you the tedious task of stacking all of the scrap uh, in a very simple explanation, um, really long pieces to get past light. Then we have all of the oak from the tree that was cut down in my parents' yard, and then some other hardwoods like mahogany and maple. And we have a couple fence pickets and then a bunch of aluminum and steel on that side. I am really curious how much this weighs. Nothing seems like it's over taut, but we're going to do a quick measurement. I'm going to assume that I max out the scale right before these went slack. That's what it feels like. So uh, I'm not too much over the maximum, which is 400 and uh, if I subtract my weight from it, that puts it at about 150 pounds. So 150 on this side, we'll assume it's equal, nice and distributed, so 150 on that side. So we're lifting about 300 pounds. The big moment. She is struggling, but she is doing it quite happily. Got to be quick on the draw. Why are you not going down? Oh, I bet you. I checked high, but I didn't check low. I 
I feel like I should be wearing a helmet right now. <laughs> All right, so I can stand here with a little bit more confidence. I looked up the accessory cord, the six millimeter, it ended up being six millimeter and not eight millimeter cord. That can handle 2000 pounds of static load. So I have four of those lines. So that means the cord itself can handle 8,000 pounds of static load. The motor can handle 440. The frame, I am 100% confident, can handle at least twice as much weight as on it now. That opens up this corner for the next big project. That actually opens up this entire wall for the next big project, which is to build drawers for the entire length. But I have hundreds of things I need to do before then. One of them, which is getting back to the cabinets we started in the beginning of the video down in the new studio. So that'll be it for this week and I will see you in the next week.